Hello, 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 and today we're going to go over how to win these tournaments with ease using math. That's right. We're going to be using mathematics to increase your probability of winning these tournaments easily. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at, say, everyone had an equal chance of winning a tournament where everyone just has a 50-50% chance of winning, right? Like where you meet up with an opponent, you have a 50% chance of winning. What do I mean by that? Well, Take a look at this, right? So if you're in a tournament of four people and everybody all has a 50% chance of winning their matches against each other, your odds of winning that tournament are one in four or 25%. Similarly, right? If we have a 32 player tournament, your odds of winning that tournament become 3.125% chance. When we get deeper and deeper into the numbers, you can see once you have over 100 players in a tournament your odds go below one percent to win the tournament and this is just you know it drastically goes down the more and more people that start entering the tournament you can see here a 500 player tournament we have just this 0.19 percent chance of winning so why do the same people keep topping these tournaments and what are some of the techniques we can use to increase our odds. Well, let me also show you an example of a sample eight player tournament, right? And I'm gonna do something here, right? We've got eight players in this tournament and they all have a 50% chance of winning, except one person in particular has a 75% chance of winning. They're either they're using a better deck or some kind of strategy, which we'll go over with some different strategies. They're doing something with their deck that makes themselves have a 75% chance of winning, right? Meaning that this person now will have a 25% chance of winning the match. And then everybody else, when they go against each other, will have 50% chances of winning. What's going to happen? What's that going to look like? Well, this is just a round of eight. I'm just making it a small tournament just to make an example. So the first round goes and then the next round, right? And then, oh, look, we got our winner right here. The person with... 75% chance, of course, won, right? This guy won the first round, boop, 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 right? Typical stuff you'd expect, but it might not be so simple because when we're evaluating the person that won with a 75% chance, you have to remember that 75% chance is not a 100% chance. In fact, after the first match, he had a 75 chance of winning, but now he had to go against a second match and that's a 56% chance of winning. And in fact, the third match this person actually has when you take the cumulative chances of winning right because you have to win 25 percent chance 25 percent chance 25 percent chance the the odds of this person winning the whole tournament isn't 75 percent in fact this person only had a 42 percent chance of winning which means it's likely someone else would win besides that player even though that they had a 75 percent chance so could have been anyone else probably this person but very interesting that it's more likely than not that even though this person had a 75 percent chance of winning the odds are someone else would have won instead and let me extrapolate that point that i'm trying to say real quick i'm going to do what if someone had an 80 percent chance of winning right let's say you had a deck that was 80 percent chance of winning over everyone else's right Here's how that math would look. Well, in your first match, you would have, of course, an 80% chance of winning. Your second match, it goes down to 64. And you could see if you're in these, even in these big tournaments that have multiple, like a round of 32 or a round of 64 or something like that. As long as you get into the top 16 would be like a match four, you'd have a 40% chance of winning. So even with an 80% chance deck, that you have over your opponent. Remember, now this has to be an 80% chance deck too. So even if you're using the top meta contender and your opponent is using a top meta contender, you guys are now 50-50. You're not even an 80% chance of winning. You have to be doing some really good techniques to improve your odds, which we're gonna talk about, by the way, to really have an edge of winning. Take a look at that. If you have to go eight matches with your 80% deck, you only have a 16% chance of winning the tournament. That's if you can even get to that stage. So what are these people doing? What is going on here 
that even an 80% chance of winning isn't good enough, right? Well, we got to do something else. And before I talk about those other things too, I do want to introduce something called the gambler's fallacy and the hot hand fallacy too that we have to talk about. Let's say you're at a carnival and the carnival games has people going against each other where he's going to flip a coin and you have to guess it if it's either going to go heads or tails and it flips and it does a different stuff throughout the night and then all of a sudden it keeps flipping and flipping and it keeps landing on heads 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 and it keeps landing on it six times in a row right well and then and the person asks you what do you think it's going to be heads or tails right and everybody's placing their bets many people will fall into the blunder of falling into two camps there's the hot hand fallacy and the gambler's fallacy. The hot hand fallacy will say, oh, hey, look at that. It's heads six times in a row. That must mean it's going to be heads again because it's a hot hand, right? They, they think that there, there might be something wrong with the coin or something. It's the erroneous belief that because it's heads so many times that, of course, the next time it's, it's going to be heads. Similarly, in the opposite camp, there's the gambler's fallacy will says, oh my gosh, it just came up head six times in a row. That means tails is now due. Tail because tails is due, I'm going to say it's tails. When in reality, both camps are wrong and the, the odds of the next flip is still 50-50. We need to always keep that in mind, especially when we're dealing with percentages of when I say a deck has an 80% chance of win to win, we have to keep in mind that it's still 80% chance. And similarly, when I say a deck is 50% chance, when it goes so far, if you've gotten that far, it still is at the end of the day, a 50% chance of winning. But we also have to talk about cumulative win ratios and also individual win ratios. And so it's very hard uh, to also, you know, an 80% win rate is not a 100% win rate. It's not a hot hand. Right. So don't fall into the high hand high fallacy of an 80 percent win rate deck is 100 percent. And similarly, also don't fall for the gambler's fallacy. Oh, this guy's won. He won, 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 won so many times. Now he's due for a loss. That's not true either. So just wanted to be aware of these before I talk about the next thing, which are some math strats that we can do here. Uh, I've talked about in a previous video how we can use gerrymandering as such a, a strategy that strategy was you sacrifice members so these are matches that are best of threes you sacrifice one of your matches to win the other two right and the example that i showed was a labyrinth player i, I kept keep saying that he's winning ycs he won a wcq i believe that and and he used a go second deck and it was very interesting. I'll show you the video. I'll link that strategy. But yes, he sacrificed one game to win the other two. And that's how he manipulated his odds. In fact, that video was how he used his deck that actually had a 50% win ratio and was consistently beating decks that had 60% and above win ratios. Very interesting technique. Another strategy you could do is called smoke and mirrors. And what that is, is Again, remember, these are best of threes. You're really utilizing your side deck and these smoke and mirrors technique strategies where you're running one type of engine, such as let's say you're running a Cash Tira engine or Snake Eyes, Cash Tira, Fiend Smith, whatever kind of engine you're using. And then game two, you suddenly take that whole engine and throw it out the window and put the all 15 cards in from the side deck. And it's a completely different engine. So it's, you're using smoke and mirrors. So let's say now you take that cash tier snake eye engine out and all of a sudden now you're putting in a runic engine. And what that smoke and mirrors trick does is when your opponent sides against you, it's like, okay, good. Now I know he's using cash tier or all this. They're not siding for runic. And all of a sudden now you blindside them and hit them with runic. That's another technique you can use to mathematically again, or maybe more psychologically too, to get in your opponent's head math and psychology very go hand in hand i find to work hand in hand finally you can use proven higher win meta ratio decks that's the easiest technique to use but remember once everyone starts doing that suddenly your advantage isn't there anymore that's why there's an asterisk because it's the easiest technique to use but everyone and their mom starts doing that technique 
and suddenly your 60% win ratio deck, right? Because, oh yeah, you're using the meta, now becomes 50-50 once everybody else starts using that. So actually, what I've actually found that works better is decks with a lot of unseen interactions from multiple sources. And I'm saying unseen because it's like more roguelike decks. I know far from made a video that's saying roguelike decks have a disadvantage. I'm actually in the opposite camp to say they have an advantage because they're not used to being played against. I've seen very much success with a lot of people using decks that people like, oh, I haven't heard of because I don't know these uh, interactions. But the thing is, they're high ceiling, but you can overload your opponents with information with, you know, you have interactions in the graveyard, public inf information, right? You have so much stuff you could do in the graveyard. Oh, you could do interactions on the field graveyard. And what happens is your opponents forgets all of this stuff because they're going against a new deck. There's uh, information everywhere that they have to react to and it's not what they're used to that's another thing you could do now next i have seven different techniques and tips you can use also the seventh one by the way is very controversial i must say these tips i'm going to give you here the last one is very controversial but i'm going to start from the general ones and we're going to go into more controversial ones later but i do want to say these general ones right nothing crazy here right understanding the game mechanics familiar side familiarizing yourself with the rules card effects very basic basic stuff but when we go down more on this list especially i want to talk about consistency i made videos about you really need to know how many starters you need to be running you want to be running about an 85 percent consistency ratio to getting your starters and getting your plays running you don't want to do is to be under i want to say under 75 percent consistency and also you don't want to be over 90 percent consistency because now you're hyper consistent and what that also doing is that's that's dangerous because you're turning your five card hands into four or three card hands and i have multiple videos on how many starters you should run and i also have videos on the dangers of over consistency and hyper consistency so check those out if you're interested in that tech choices i have uh, various tech choices videos to go over as well all of these are tips which i have videos on too please watch them because it's the sum and aggregate of all of these techniques that's going to make you win these tournaments and i can't really break it down into a quick video here so you have to really brush up and do a lot of knowledge here too especially when the tech choices come funny enough i've seen even pro players not know some techniques and some tech choices that are used in these rogue decks i've had pro players not even know about noble knight shield bearer for example that's used in ninjas because they don't know about it and it's a very good tech so again all of these very basic stuff, but and some of these like deck composition, right? Have a balanced traps, hand traps, all of this spells and traps. You don't want to overload, but also some decks can break that. For example, Runic, for example, uh, overloads and spells, but you still do want to have a balance of starters in that. So a starters being like Runic Tip and access to those kind of things. All of the Runics can essentially be a starter as well. A lot of ratios go into planning out your competitive decks again play testing adjusting right master duel great i want to say great resource for testing your decks let's move on to the next couple of tips next couple of tips watching tournaments watching pro players studying deck profiles right and coming up with your own unique spin because that helps you win more than others because you get familiar with your deck and you start falling into what's called i i call it when you're driving it's highway hypnosis sometimes when i'm piloting the decks i'm on autopilot and i'm just like oh this goes here doop 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 and i'm going so fast with my plays the opponent can't keep up it, i obviously if, if you're in person if then you, you need to slow down for them please do so because we're being respectful but sometimes you can fall into autopilot especially in master duel if you're just doing your plays boom, 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 bada bing bada boom they can't keep up knowing your deck really helps so much in just becoming familiarized i've played 
sometimes some of my decks thousands of times thousands of times i became master one in master duel just by using ninjas and the very high win ratio won a lot of local tournaments with that very fun but e even when we're trying to again preparing for the tournament there's a lot of mental preparation that needs to be done getting hydrated remember these are long long tournaments and just having a positive atmosphere i think if you are respectful and having a good time it goes a long way but remember that side deck is a big big thing too a lot of people neglect the side deck and they just throw some stuff in there and call it a day wash their hands really really analyze your side deck that can go a long long way to making you win these tournaments spending as much time as your side deck as you do your regular deck is something that separates the masters players and the winning tournament champions every card has a purpose from the people that are just you know like oh yeah i could put these in in case you know i'll put some uh, cosmic cyclones in case i go against a stun deck i'll put this right they really are scrutinizing every single one of their cards and i implore you to do that as well again all of these as i was talking i'm sure you've already read these already pretty pretty basic stuff also join communities we have a discord where we will analyze your deck and go over your deck the strengths the weaknesses of it please post your deck in our discord join our discord we will analyze your deck really really cool go over it strengths weaknesses and cards that we think we can you can use we brainstorm this stuff together very very cool now to the controversial thing that i was saying uh, it's, it's in the additional tips reflect analyze yes basic stuff continuous improvement off of gameplay yes 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 here's something that i think is very underrated and very controversial and that's to know the judge i can't tell you how many times that and and again this is very again very controversial if you're friends with the judge polite with them that they're not going to rule in your favor but they might just you know because it's not master duel that things are errors are bound to happen and what's going to happen is right it's gonna the judge might have an issue where oh how do i resolve this conflict and the thing is right he could restore the game state there's a lot of things where an error occurs the judge might do something that's going to be favorable to you if you know the judge and i hate to say that i know that's controversial granted the best judges won't do that but, but there might be a, a, a small bias to the players that do know the judges or the top ranking players right especially if they're like hey this is what you should do that they might lean towards you know restoring the game state in a certain favor or doing ruling a certain way on certain calls again very controversial but i do think it always helps just to familiar size say hello to the judge and just be a kind person in general don't be one of those rule sharks or something because you might find that the judge is no more than you and they will find a way a loophole to do something against you within their rules and in the boundaries of the game uh, that's allowed that's going to rule not in your favor if you are being a douche <laughs> so i I've, i can t talk stories and stuff like that but again very controversial but just be a nice person right and keep calm and enjoy the game have fun always be polite to your opponents and i'm telling you it goes a long way it really does good for your psyche and yes so by utilizing anyways the techniques especially those post-game techniques such as and, and pre-game techniques such as setting your deck up using the, again check out the video on gerrymandering and how to do that checking out all of those stuff that's how you can use math to increase your odds of winning these tournaments and having a good time too there's and that's why the same players win over and over and over again it's more than just math it's a lot of different techniques and stuff that is used anyways hope you guys like this video i will see you guys next time please like and subscribe and please check out a lot of my mathematical videos uh, hope, hope to see you guys there bye